Honourable members, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is now my singular honour and privilege to invite His Excellency the Governor of Nairobi City County to address this special sitting of the County Assembly. Thank you, thank you very much. The Right Honourable Speaker of the Nairobi City County Assembly, the Deputy Speaker, the Nairobi County Assembly Leadership, Honourable Members of County Assembly, distinguished guests in the gallery, and I'm very happy to see the Chairman of the Revenue Authority of Nairobi, the Chairman of Nairobi Water Company, Amongst others, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Mr. Speaker and honorable members, when I took office 19 months ago, the hopes and dreams Nairobians had shared with me on the campaign were uppermost in my mind. Wherever we went, we met men and women of energy, innovation, and ambition. They were ready to work, but they were also tired of the inequality, the squalor, and the misgovernance of the past. They wanted a fresh start for their city. They sent me here to make that fresh start. They sent you here to make that fresh start. I knew it would not be easy or simple. We would need radical change in our institutions, in our habits of governance, and in our relations with colleagues and friends from the national government, from other counties, to our development partners. But the people of Nairobi sent me here to bring that change. They trusted us, they trusted you, they trusted me, and I am not going to let them down. And that is why we have set our plans to bring order, dignity, hope and opportunity to Nairobians. And that is why I am here today to hold myself accountable before you to the promises that I made. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, in doing so, I fulfill in your presence and in the hearing of the people of Nairobi and the people of Kenya a constitutional obligation. Authority is a trust given to us by the people of Kenya. Article 10.2 of our constitution demands of us that we exercise that authority guided by the values of dignity, equality, justice, inclusivity, and accountability. And that we stand ready to account to the people of Kenya for our decisions when we make them. Section 32 of the County Government Act also provides that I deliver this annual State of the County Address every year. I am ready to meet that obligation today, so let us begin. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable members, we took office at a time of turmoil. The pandemic had just ended. The economy was only beginning to recover. The county had huge pending bills, above 100 billion Kenya shillings. Our legal liabilities were unpredictable. Nairobians had had enough of crude partisan politics, expensive services, and streets as dirty as the city was disorderly. The administration of this county suffered because leaders were deeply divided by partisan affiliation. Honorable members, right honorable speaker, I must deeply and profusely thank and congratulate the leadership of this House. The Right Honourable Speaker, Ken Okeo Gondi, CBS, and come. Inshallah. The Deputy Speaker, Kados. The leaders of majority and minority parties, Peter Jateso Imotok. 
Anthony Bishop Kiragu Karanja the deputies Mushimiwa Kaende and uh, Mushimiwa Kaidera Chege the whips Moses Nyangaresi Ogeto whom we wish speedy recovery I had a chance to visit him and we keep talking he is recovering very well and we pray that God brings him back to the strength and the candor that we are used to in Moses Nyangaresi Ogeto and of course Mark Mugambi Masaria Ronaldo and their deputies Joyce and Stazo Omungala and of course our elders Dr. Wilfred Oloch Odalo Kerr Kerr who doubles up as chair of budget and his PhD is on a speciality <laughs> and Dr. James Maura Shege as well who is an a staunch apprentice of care for helping us bridge that divide helping us work together as one family the Nairobi family I want to thank you because in the history of Nairobi County there has not been 19 months like the one we have had since the beginning of this country congratulations honorable members I acknowledge the great work done by the Nairobi City County Assembly in its oversight, representation, and legislative roles. Members, you hold and represent the hopes and aspirations of millions of Nairobians, and you can always count on my support as you execute your mandate. In strengthening your capacity, I have signaled my support, and the Cabinet of the CEC will approve the use and transfer of county land in Upper Hill for the construction of your administration block, assembly, and offices for all the members of county assembly to better serve the people of Nairobi. Honorable members, even before I took office, I felt the weight of the county's problems. Precisely because of that awareness, I was driven to hasten the implementation of changes which I believed that the county needed. Today, I'm happy to give a report card. Have we lived up to the promises and expectations we set? I believe we have. Revenue mobilization was a priority from the beginning. We could not hope to redeem our promises without significantly changing the ways that we raised our revenue. I want to recognize that members here realized its importance and have continued to work with us to bring order to Nairobi's finances. This year, we set ourselves a target of 19.9 billion of our own source revenue, informed by research which actually shows our revenue potential in the order of 60 billion shillings. In the last financial year, we managed to raise 10.6 billion, which is more than any of the last five years. This year, we are on course to surpass the own source revenue record set in the 2015-16 financial year of 12.2 billion. Already in the first half, of the financial year 2023-24, we surpassed the last one by 1.5 billion, and the last three months have been exceedingly spectacular, including the record day that has been set of March 26th, where we collected 236 million shillings in one day. Looking ahead, we can see several steps, each of which will transform our revenue raising capabilities. First, we will regularize development to correct the urban planning oversights of the past and to ease collection. We will also effect the Sectional Properties Act, the better to allow owners of units of properties, be they apartments or offices, the opportunity to acquire title deeds for their units. This will protect property owners from the danger of losing their hard-earned assets when the leases of the mother titles expire and the reversionary interest goes to other people. I hope and I believe that I will get support from this county assembly in fast tracking the regularization bill and all other legislation that is required to achieve this. These are among the high potential areas in addition to expanding the base of rate pairs. And by way of illustration, 
according to our records, we have 197,500 parcels of land in Nairobi, but only 30,000 accounts that have been paying for those titles, despite that being our largest revenue source. Together with the national government, we have actually realized 350,800 parcels that we are going to bill each individually to be able to pay their rates. A revenue system where only a few pay for the rest is not just, it is not equitable. Secondly, ladies and gentlemen, right honorable speaker, honorable members, we have established the Nairobi Revenue Authority, which will be responsible for revenue collection going forward. This is pursuant to legislation passed in this assembly. I am grateful to you all for appropriating the funds that allowed us to secure office space for the authority. As we speak, the fitting out of the NRA's offices at the CBK Pension Towers is in its final stages, as is the recruitment of a chief executive officer. In all, we expect to see a significant rise in revenue, as well as in the order and effectiveness of collection once the new authority is up and running. Mr. Speaker, Nairobi City County is saddled with huge outstanding liabilities, opening bills, a liability with which we will have to deal. We have started and made a lot of progress in evaluating this debt. Our teams are re-examining the claims by the Kenya Revenue Authority, by Kenya Power, amongst other large claimants, to verify the true state of those accounts. Secondly, negotiations with statutory debtors are ongoing. Thirdly, and I must thank this House, our debt management strategy paper, which has been presented and passed in this House, sets our proposal for handling each and every one of these liabilities. Fourthly, and as a matter of urgency, my staff and I have enforced tighter controls on expenditure. Our finance and economy teams, led by Charles Kerich, have been diligent. Charles Kerich, Asha Abdi, and the other chief officers, Gakuya, and the rest, thank you for the work you've been doing. But more than that, members of this House have been extraordinarily supportive. Over time, we have been able to achieve significant fiscal discipline, which then makes our programs feasible and which honors the people of Nairobi who entrusted us with the hard-earned money. We have also maintained, as difficult as it was in the beginning, our no-cash policy in government, ensuring that our revenue streams are digitized. Honorable members, the Unified Business Permit was a campaign pledge that my administration was keen to implement. I am delighted to inform this House. to seek different licenses. All licenses are available in a one-stop shop. We have encouraged Nairobians to seek services online through our portal www.nairobiservices physically over the counter. Please come to our physically over the counter. Please come to our recently revamped customer care center at City Hall Annex where you'll be served. These customer service centers or client service centers were envisaged in the County Governments Act 2012, Section 119, and I'm proud to note to you that Nairobi City County is the first county to establish one. For the last three months, members, the county has been offering civic education on the Unified Business Permit and helping customers to create online accounts. Beginning this month, and members will remember that we discussed this in our recent retreat, we will resume enforcement to ensure compliance. The county government has developed an enforcement application or app that will allow targeted and efficient interaction with our clients aiming to encourage compliance. The era of county Ascaris, of running battles, and I'm sure the informal mayor of the city, Moshimiwa Kwenya, will attest to it, running battles between our enforcement officers and hawkers are a thing of the past.
by our new approach to enforcement of these rights, which includes that and continued engagement with the members. Members, this is unacceptable. We will not tolerate this. We must let our enforcement officers we must let our enforcement officers do their work. Obstruction of government officers fulfilling their mandate is a crime punishable by law and will be dealt with firmly. The people of Nairobi affirmed their desire for a city of order. Order will be maintained. To set the record straight, members, and to be clear, there is no problem whatsoever in recording officers as they perform their duties. If anything, it leads to increased accountability. You can even shoot a movie if you want. What we will not accept is obstructing them or inciting the public to turn against them as they perform their duties. Order will be established and order will be maintained. Honorable members, I really expect your support in protecting our officers, but ensuring that they also have accountability for the work that they do and that they treat the people of Nairobi with dignity. That is an affirmation that we have made. That is an affirmation that we intend to keep. Part of the proposals we have is to introduce, once the assembly passes, the use of body cams, body cameras on our officers so that the whole story can always be seen. When somebody takes a three-second clip or half a minute clip and blasts it on social media, always half of the story is told. But just like a coin, there are two sides plus the other side. There are actually three sides. Let us have the full story and let us affirm the integrity and the dignity of Nairobi City County Government officers. Members, I hope that you will support me on that. This financial year, honorable members, ladies and gentlemen, the county government kicked off e-procurement to inculcate transparency and efficiency in the process of onboarding suppliers as well as in receiving and accounting for goods and services. It was long overdue. Our manual processes were prone to delays and abuse. Many times there were cases of fake LPOs printed in River Road or other places that we said we have to move away from. E-procurement, ladies and gentlemen, has brought back sanity. I want to affirm to you that there shall be no turning back from e-procurement. The county's economic planning subsector has received accolades, and I must congratulate them, led again by our CC and chief officers um, and Mr. Sianga, accolades for coming up with the best county integrated development plan, CIDP, our development blueprint that has been emulated by other counties. Nairobi leads and others follow. I'm immensely grateful to this assembly and especially to the Budget and Appropriations Committee, led by Honorable Kerr Odal, for your support. And all the members, and all the 23 members of the Budget and Appropriations Committee. Asante ni sana, may you keep working with diligence, as you set an example for other counties. The World Development Program, an initiative close to the hearts of honorable members, close to the heart of the governor, close to the heart of Nairobians, has ensured equitable distribution of development funds across all of the 85 wards of Nairobi. We have raised the allocation from 17 million to 23 million shillings per ward. WDP has tarmacked the first county road in Udiru Rudimitu ward. It has laid the first cabro in Jadaine in Zimmerman ward. It has seen the completion of the state of the art Uhuru Sports Complex in Kariobangi South, and I'm sure there are many, many success stories across your wards. There are now 85 projects worth 1.92 billion that are currently underway. I want to assure you that you will continue to receive my total support. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Mr. Speaker and honorable members, let me now turn to our work to satisfy the value of dignity. It is complex.
He also ensure a new level of professionalism in later day operations while leading the strategic development initiatives required for longer term success. Quite a number of wins to report. I want to start with Mamalusi Kibaki Hospital, which recently opened the first public eye hospital in Kenya, the Mamalusi Kibaki Eye Hospital in Umoja 2 Annex, where every day about 300 patients are seen and more than 20 procedures. So that is blinded by eye infections left untreated. You all know, all of you who are here, that sight is the most prized of our senses. Its loss or damage is life-changing. In restoring sight, we transform lives. Recently, and had been blind for 50 years. He refused to leave the hospital. Because after years of not being able to see, he thought that if he left, he will stop seeing. We had to encourage him that he will still see, even as he left the hospital. It was so heartwarming seeing him exchange jokes with his son, asking his son, so this is how you look after 51 years. I thought you were more handsome. It was really heartwarming. That story is shared with many, many families. In that hospital, we are manufacturing spectacles. In that hospital, surgeries are performed. The blind are seeing. Thank you to the County Assembly of Nairobi. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members, we have also established the Mamalusi Kibaki Intensive Care Unit, the first ICU facility to be established in this county since the advent of devolution. We have established a blood bank that was in the manifesto. We have established a renal unit. Anyone who has borne the burden of mistreatments or avoidable harm simply because a bed in a renal unit or an ICU was unavailable will appreciate what a step this is for the people of Nairobi. We have brought other services to that facility. We have opened an orthopedic and trauma center, which consists of two theaters and a 20-bed capacity ward. We have a new reconstructive surgery center, and we've also opened an integrated mother-child health care center, which offers breast and cervical cancer diagnosis and treatment amongst other services. Last year, we installed a new neonatal ICU at Mbagathi Hospital. As I said at the time, it was a project to prioritize because we had seen the dire consequences of delay and congestion in treating newborn babies, especially those born before their time, the premature births. The new, the new unit at Mbagathi is the latest public ICU in Nairobi. It comes complete with four high-need beds, 20 incubators and highly technical and professional staff. In fact, one of our doctors there, Dr. Manyasi, was part of the team that performed the first intrauterine blood transfusion in the history of this country at Kenyatta National Hospital. We are proud of Dr. Manyasi and the entire team that is there, led by the CEO, Alex Irungu. The CEO of Mamalusi is Alfred Wekesa. The CEO of Pumwani is Kristin Kitusho. The CEO of Mutuini, hospital, um, soon to be actually named Mamarecho Ruto Hospital, is Dr. Obwanda. But I can pledge that we'll open more so that Nairobi's mothers and their children live lives of dignity. In particular, the NICU or the Neonatal ICU at Pumwani Hospital will be completed this financial year that ends in June this year. Thank you, Chairman Health, for the support you've accorded the executive in performance of their duties. And I must thank the committee. When you had visitors recently, you acted like Nairobi County. May God bless you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have amazing news. We are very close, in fact, ours, to completely, formally, completing the agreements of reversion of Mama Margaret Kenyatta, rather Mama Margaret Uhuru Hospital, in Karibangi North, I know Moshimiwa Matach and my best friend Munuve compete on whose ward it is in. Koro, yeah. Moshimiwa Matach says Korogosho at the fence. Moshimiwa Munuve says it's Karibangi North. I will give the final determination. 
but we are finally at the last stage of having this hospital come back to the county as a level five general hospital. This facility with 400 beds, double the size of Mamalusi Hospital, will serve a catchment area of, four million, of 2 million people across uh, the area it is in. It will ease pressure on Mamalusi Kibaki Hospital. Our predecessors, those who have been here before us, the journey that started in 1989 with the Nyai Awards, a journey that had several false starts, several misses, a journey that Governor Evans Kidero tried, but it faltered. The next administration tried, but it faltered, is about to culminate in the coming few hours. Members, this is indeed a milestone for the people of Nairobi. Gone will be the days of beds being shared by our mothers and our sisters at Mamalusi Kipaki Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, we're also progressively upgrading our level four hospitals, not least by strengthening the governance structures to introduce new committees and boards. And members, I asked you for recommendations as well for those who have a level four facility within your ward in changing those structures and in introducing professional management, but in keeping with the national agenda of creating fully fledged primary care networks. Allow me to mention two more interventions in health before I move on to something else. You will remember, members, that we promised to equip and to resource and to fund 7,480 community health promoters with kids that they need to do their work and to pay them a monthly stipend. We have done so. Members of Nairobi County Government, and this is a story very close to my heart because I fought for this when I was in the Senate. Nairobi County Government was the first county government to introduce a stipend of 3,500 shillings to all of our community health promoters. Then we used to call them community health volunteers. And I'm glad that now the national government has also added 2,500 shillings. Now 7,300 of them are equipped, are equipped with smartphones, community health kits, and every month, and I instructed my finance team, every month they receive their stipends, and I told them they must receive their stipends before I receive my salary. They are doing an amazing work in our communities. They have covered 750,000 households in the city who may not need to go to hospital but to manage um, certain conditions at home. Let us appreciate the community health promoters of Nairobi County. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I turn to my favorite project, and I'm sure you can guess. Which one is it? Ladies and gentlemen, I now turn to Dishina County to the school feeding program. And I want to start to thank you sincerely for supporting this stream. Let me tell you the story of Mildred Ayera. Mildred, an orphan, lived with a grandmother and struggled to get a meal every day. Mildred was a student at New Kimbuini Primary School in Kangemi. I'm sure Ms. Shemua Hamisi might, could know her. She often sat aside at lunchtime when other students enjoyed their lunch. I'm sure you know stories of such students, Chair Health Perpetua, who during lunchtime have a lunch box that has just something inside, but not food. And they go to the corner to pretend that they're eating lunch so that the other students don't ridicule them. I'm sure you know many students who at lunchtime when they're told to go for lunch, they don't come back because they find nothing at home. But Mildred told us a story during the issuance of bursaries, last, uh, the last session, that the introduction of the school feeding program, where the first meal was served on August 28th, gave her hope. That third term, when she was in her final year in primary school, she got a nutritious meal every school day. It kept her in school. It was a turning point. She emerged one of the top students in Nairobi and in her school. She joined Loreto Limuru Girls this January. As we issued bursaries and scholarships this year, um, I think it was at Milimani. Uh, was it Milimani? Yes, Milimani Secondary. Mildred gave her moving testimony while wearing this tap to eat watch, which I hoped all members would have by now. When she gave her moving testimony, she vowed that she would never remove this tap to eat watch, even as she moved on to high school. 
Mildred's story is a story of thousands of children in Nairobi today. When we began, we wanted to make sure and make absolutely certain that each and every child in our county was able to learn that they were not denied an education simply because they were hungry. We knew, research showed us, and statistics, that one out of every four children in Nairobi had skipped school sometime in the past because they had skipped or rather had no food. In feeding each and every one of our children, Mr. Speaker, a nutritious hot meal, we invest in the cognitive development and empower them to excel. We knew that many children had nothing back at home. Despite different interventions to derail this program, either through court action or through premature political activism, it has continued to thrive. Let Mildred stand as our exemplar over here. This program, ladies and gentlemen, honorable members, is now fully up and running. We have built successfully beautiful kitchens at Babadogo Primary School, Mwishimio Majiwa. You are there. At Kayole One Primary School, is that uh, Wairia or is Mufa? Mwishimio Wairia. Thank you. At Njiru Primary School, Mwishimio Carrington. Heho. At Osambu Primary School, where is Honda Bokimani? Mugo. At BD Primary School, that is possibly Honda Bokimemia. Thank you. At Toy Primary School, that is Honda Davidson and Gibuini, DNG. At Farasi Lane Primary School, that is Honda Alvin Palapala 003. That is a, a private one, eh? But I'm sure Honorable Stazo will not agree. At Mudangari Primary School, that must be Honorable Robert Alai. Oh, oh, oh yes, Nyangaresi eh, Ogeto, uh, Kilelesho Ward, Kilimani Ward, where I live. At Riscos Primary School, Simba, Honorable Wahinya and at Mukuru Kwanjenga Primary School, Honorable Kimondo. You will attest that those kitchens are indeed serious structures. Each kitchen is a central kitchen that serves between 10 to 15,000 meals a day. Honorable members, you have done a spectacular job. Every single day, 184,000 children in Nairobi eat a hot, nutritious meal. That is a commitment I made to the people of Nairobi that is a promise I have kept. That is a manifesto item that we have ticked. No program of this magnitude or importance succeeds in isolation. So allow me to thank the parents, the teachers, the development partners, our county assembly, and the good people of Nairobi County who have made it possible. I must also thank the French government. During the Africa Climate Summit, when I took the French Minister of State, Chrisula, to Olympic Primary School, and she saw thousands of children excited at the meal. She offered us a million euros through our implementing partners, Food for Education, that ensures that even that parent who cannot afford five shillings, that no child will ever be removed from a line of lunch in school, told that you have no money. Every children, each and every of our children will eat. Right now, great people, we have the largest school feeding program in our history. Unlike previous programs, which were either limited to a small proportion of the enrolled school age population, or had wide coverage but supplied only one food item, I'm sure many of us might remember those of us who grew up in the city, Maziwa and Nyayo, that would come every so often, once in a while, in our schools. We bring nearly every child in a public primary school or ECD center a full balanced meal and we'll have complete coverage by the end of the year. In the last two weeks, Honorable Speaker, I have broken ground for more kitchens. I went to Uru Gardens Primary School in Langata, Honorable Akama. We were together. Then went to Mutuini Primary School in Dagoreti South, where we broke ground, Honorable Mato Mbugwa. We were together. And of course, the leader of minority, Tulikuwa Hapo. We broke ground in Donom Primary School, and Honorable Mungala could not believe his eyes in Embakasi East.
Honorable Stazo, we broke it. We then went to Dandora One Primary School. Honorable Alan Mainagaduko, you remember. After that, we drove at a good pace to Dururuno Primary School in uh, Madare constituency. Sorry? That is in uh, Dururuno, is it? It is in Kiamaiko, not Mnango Kubwa. Honda Bondoch, we missed you. But we were told you were away. But you are represented by your member of parliament, Honda Bo uh, Oloch was there. And thereafter, we went to Umoja One Primary School of the Indomitable Roro, Mark Mugambi Masharia, where we broke ground. But Honda Bo Masharia knows how to turn my knobs and make sure I bought sodas for everyone including the neighbors. Thank you so much, Honorable Mark Mugambi Masharia. The construction is ongoing of those seven kitchens. We will shortly break ground in Zawadi Primary School, Honorable Nixo, uh, Nixon Okwacho Juma. We are breaking ground. I want to thank you and thank your Member of Parliament, Honorable Yusuf, for the support because they insisted that that kitchen must be built at Zawadi Primary School because of the informal settlement of Kiambiu that is next to it. The idea was to take it to a different school, but they insisted, and they have even moved critical infrastructure that they will replace using CDF to make sure that that kitchen works. <laughs> Members, we have many children in Nairobi who don't go to our public primary schools. They go to informal schools known as UPBET, Alternative Provision of Basic Education. As we mobilize more resources, and you know these schools, these are informal schools because over the years, Nairobi, after systemic regimes, did not invest in school infrastructure for our children. Members, you remember when we broke ground in Roisambu, and I was really moved. I think I shed a tear. It was a three billion shilling tear. Because out of that, we have received three billion shillings over the next three years to build classrooms in primary schools and ECDs. For our ECDs, I want to thank the budget committee because we have agreed that we shall put 500 million shillings every year so that each and every ward, including wards that might not currently have a school, will start having ECD centers starting this financial year. The national government, and I must thank His Excellency the President, passed in the supplementary budget 1 billion shillings for primary school facilities in each and every constituency. Members, in the next three years, we might do something that is unheard of, that we'll be able to have left this assembly having created more classrooms than you found when you were sown in in this third assembly of the county of Nairobi. And so what we have said, as we mobilize more resources from our various partners, we have brought regulations to the assembly to create a governance structure of school feeding so that we can have a board that includes the private sector, development partners, have a secretariat, and so that Nairobians can decide to adopt a child, to support them for a month, to buy a meal for a day, to buy a meal for a year. As we do that, we intend to cover all of our schools. Meaning, the children in these informal schools, the abbot schools, a school where on Sunday it is a church, on Monday it is a, it is a school, in the evening there is a meeting of women, the next day there is karate. Each of those schools will be mapped out to a public primary school, in the fullness of time, and those children at lunchtime will go to the nearest public primary school, have lunch, and go back to their schools. I want to tell you, the children of Nairobi, whether they're in public primary schools or in informal schools, are our children. They look up to you members. And I'm sure Mushimiwa of Gatina is very happy because he took me to that meeting in his ward with the update schools. Thank you, members, as well, because you reduced the license from 10,000 to 3,000, payable once per term. May God bless you. May God bless you so deeply. So what have we seen? We have seen enrollment increase in our schools, retention and better performance. It is sad that many times these children don't finish their meal. They eat a bit and take it back home because of the poverty that bites in our city and which you have the power to help change the story. It's an achievement that makes me immensely proud and that I'm pleased to share with you. It is not my achievement. It is the achievement of this county assembly, of the county executive, and of the people of Kenya. 
but mostly of the children of Nairobi. Mr. Speaker and honorable members, climate change and environmental sustainability are now integral parts of our planning, our decision making, and our implementation of programs. What then are we doing to preserve the dignity of our people's surroundings? Firstly, we have collected more than 450,000 tons of solid waste in the last six months through our own internal capacity. Now, it is still not at the level that we need if we are to meet the expectations of the people of Nairobi, but rest assured with your support, it will continue to rise. Secondly, we continue to acquire the equipment we need to keep the county clean. We have acquired 10 skip loaders, 27 tippers, 120 assorted skips. We are set to receive 24 refuse compactors. Uh, those who remember, remember Camero. 24 of those are coming there in the high seas. Thank you for passing that in the budget in the coming weeks. Additionally, we will distribute more skips to our markets and to other high use locations before the end of this financial year. In tandem with our work, we have licensed 298 private service providers and we will still license more if they meet our standards. Members, we need to keep Nairobi clean. And we are perfectly happy to work with the private sector and others to do so. That is why we have also issued 14 new recycling permits. And we have accredited and registered 104 new community-based environmental organizations. Members, as I intimated to you before, we need your support. Because the biggest scourge we have is that of illegal dumping. We have established zones. We know where the uh, trash needs to be taken. But people within our woods, youth who many of us know, after the Green Army has cleaned, come and dump. Kindly support us in bringing this to an end. Members, we are on track in our efforts to establish a 45 megawatt waste to energy plant in Dandora. Given that the PPP is in the final stages of negotiation, we have already awarded China National Electric and Engineering Company who have done similar work in other parts of the continent and in the Middle East. The setting up of our waste to energy plant has been the subject of discussions for decades. It has been a story. Every mayor has spoken about it. Every governor has spoken about it. And there's been no headway. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud. First, that no one has come as far as we have been able to. But that the groundbreaking of this factory, and I want to invite all of you, will be a historic milestone that will benefit the people of Nairobi for decades to come. Earlier on, one of the proposals was to move this waste to energy plant away from Dandora. The people of Dandora have suffered for decades. They have suffered from the stench. They have suffered respiratory illnesses. Why then would you pass the benefit to a different part of the city? The first people who should benefit from the waste to energy facility are the people of Mbakasi North and Dandora as we move to the rest of Nairobi. I think it is fair, it is equitable, it is the right thing to do. Of course, what I hope to see as a Dandora Power Company will be able to produce energy for the whole of Nairobi. But you first start from where they have endured suffering, including having a respiratory ward in one of our hospitals. Isn't it equitable for us to do it there? I think it is the right thing for us to do. Members, and this one I know you know very well. We have recruited 3,500 youth into the Green Army. Ama, you don't know that. This, honorable members, is the largest single recruitment of environmental support staff since God made Nairobi. And as you can see, they have gotten down to work right away. Many of you have seen them in your neighborhoods as they clear and clog drainages and as they cleared it in preparation for the highest bits of El Nino. Members, we must ensure that they always have the equipment they need and we will of course propose those in the budget. They must always have the protective gear they require and the supervision necessary for the effective delivery of the mandate. In every part of the city, in every ward, you know these people. They are happy, they're energetic, they're engaged, and they're doing a good job. I would like us to honor and to thank the Green Army for the work that they're doing. I should also mention that we have also recruited an additional 147 technical staff in the environmental roles this year. The last time 
employment was done in the environmental sector was in the 80s, when many of you were born. In fact, some were not born. And you find an entire sub-county had only three people or four people who are now nearing retirement. I was recently talking to Honorable Njogu of Kawangware, and he attested to the fact that I think there were three women only, or two. In the whole, one in the world. Now you have 20 or 30 young people doing that work. In Embakasi, his constituency, from Mihango to Utawala to Donho, there were four women above the age of 50 cleaning the entire sub-county. Today, there are dozens of young people. As you equip them, as you put the adequate resources even to fuel for our trucks, we will have a beautiful city. Now we want them to move on to beautification, to planting of trees, to planting of flowers, so that we can restore the glory of the city of Nairobi. Rome was not built in a day. Neither was Nairobi. We will get there. You can expect to see more of that energy and innovation as the force gets down to work this year. The team has been critical in unclogging of drains, in tree planting, in beautification and maintenance of our parks and open spaces. We recently had torrential rains. Those torrential rains really shook the city in many aspects. This time, it was not about drainage. It was not about dumping, because there's no illegal dumping on the expressway. It is not about buildings, because there's no building there. It was a sheer amount of rain. I want to really ask us to consider and commiserate with those who lost loved ones. I spent hours at country bus trying to find the body of a police officer, Chesire, a gallant officer, who had rescued four children. And when he went to close the store, a string of shops of containers built on drainage, the ground collapsed under him, and he was swept away. I spent time in Viwandani, and Honorable Rooney will tell you, at two sites, where the work of one who was doing the roads from other road agencies led to flooding and actually loss of resources and property of many of our industrialists. The story is the same in Jiru, where a young girl of 12 years old was swept away because our rivers burst their banks. Even as we do what we must do, in increasing the infrastructure for drainage. Members, when we come to your wards and the structure is put in the wrong place, whether it is a kiosk or a container or a shop, to save lives, and we need to move that structure kindly, support that. Because the temporary support of those few people doing that business will never equate the loss of a life. In the city. I am sure, as I can see you nodding your heads in affirmation, that you will support that cause. <laughs> Mr. Speaker and Honorable Members, we are not yet there, but we will get there. We have cleared more than 150 dumping sites. You can see the maintenance on all the tree cup squares, the flower gardens, the medians and shoulders within the CBD. We are currently rehabilitating walkways in the lower parts of the CBD, Accra Road, Latema Road, Riscos Road, Tomboya Street, River Road, as well as serious walkway and asphalt works at the parliamentary square before the opening of the new parliamentary offices by His Excellency the President in the coming few days. These works are also going on in many of your wards where we are improving the mobility of the people of Nairobi. Ladies and gentlemen, Uhuru Park, its renovation is complete. And Uhuru Park will be available to the public free of charge. Earlier, Earlier, there were, there were proposals to charge Nairobians to use Uhuru Park. Remembering the number of times that jobless people, who of course many of us have been, would go there at lunchtime to eat an air burger as we listen to a pastor, lie on the grass as you think about your problems, would not allow me to charge a shilling on Kenyans who want to use Uhuru Park. What we shall do and what we have put in place, we have put in place a um, management system from the gate that when you come in you will be able to leave your ID for us to make sure there is security to know who has come in there so that we can also not have the wrong people lazing around in that place or creating insecurity. We are deploying a special security team from our inspectorate and from the police service that will man Uhuru Park 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. The Central Park which is adjacent um, behind Serena, 
is only one that will have a small cover charge because of the secluded or specified areas. There's an amphitheater, there's a Nyatiti water feature where weddings can be performed, there is an outdoor library. There are places where I hope even we can do a sitting of the assembly one of these days, and that will have a different special charge. But Uru Park shall remain free. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first full renovation of the park on this scale in its history. When we got into office, the works were not complete, but we made sure that we were able to complete those works properly and get the handover from the contractors and from the Kenya Defense Forces. I invite every family in Nairobi to visit and see what has been done for you. But please, the people of Nairobi, let us use the new facility with due care for other Nairobians. When we opened it in Chris, over Christmas, towards the new year, there was a slight issue of the plane where happy and jubilant Nairobians decided to sit on the wing of the plane and it broke. I think we should allow people to see it a bit more. They'll get used to it and we had to repair it. Let's take care of what we have. It has been done by taxpayers' money. Uh, uh, you see, they're from Mbakasi East. Yes, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable members, we intend to have such parks across the city, not just Uru Park. We must have such parks for recreation, relaxation, and rejuvenation, rejuvenation of the mind, body, and soul. We have undertaken landscaping and maintenance. The Mundimbingu and Muratina roundabout beautification is complete. The TRM traffic island is near completion, including an ablution block, which you passed in the assembly. We will complete the refurbishment and maintenance of Central Park, of City Park, which of course is also coming back to us after it had gone to the KFS during the NMS time. Um, Jivanji Gardens right here in the CBD. Come Kunji Grounds within the next 18 months. We intend to come to Jakaranda Grounds. Jakaranda Ground is huge and it can be used for relaxation and for recreation and to be used as a park, not just for political events, including Kam Kunji Grounds. In the last year or so, ladies and gentlemen, more than 200,000 flowers, trees, and shrubs have been planted along frontages under the Urban Beautification Program that we run in partnership with other institutions. Our tree nursery in City Park has managed to propagate 72,000 seedlings to be used in our public facilities. As a county, we have already planted a cumulative 655,000 seedlings and dispersed 25,000 seed balls across the county in our efforts to green Nairobi. As the Global Vice Chair, of C40 for Africa. The C40 cities is a network of 100 cities globally on climate action, and I, I deputize the Mayor of London. I am proud to inform you that we have doubled the number of air quality monitors in the city of Nairobi and passed the Air Quality Act, which will govern our efforts to make sure that the air our children breathe is clean. Here too, ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to say that we have kept our promise. Recently, the office of the Governor of Nairobi was awarded the first International Finance Corporation World Bank Edge Certification to be the first certified green government building in Africa. I am grateful. <laughs> yes, the first. Not just of national and county across the continent. The first one. I am grateful to the Kenya Green Building Society, led by one of our own shining stars, Honorable Nasra Nanda. for leading this initiative. Thank you for your belief in Nairobi. Thank you for representing us well. When you first shared this idea, I thought it was out of the world. I didn't see it happening. But today, when you walk to the office of the governor, from the VIP entrance, you will see a globally recognized certification from IFC Edge World Bank. Thank you, Moshimi Onasla. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, honorable members, when you introduced those in the gallery, I saw someone being uploaded. So let me reflect briefly on our work in the water sector. In the last year or so, Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Speaker, I think we, we need to investigate. Uh, <laughs> uh, I am told uh, Engineer Muguna is Akotop. I think I can also see a few of the board members there. There's Arnold Karanja, the chairman. There is, is that Johnson Mukabwa? I think so. Asantini. In the last year, members, more than 55 kilometers of water piping 
have been laid or rehabilitated in the county of Nairobi. The extensions and rehabilitation of water pipelines boosted the water supply to the city and cut the losses to leakage that were routine in the past. The level of non-revenue water has gone down significantly. I gave them targets and I'm sure they will meet those targets that I set. Equally, robust enforcement through both our smart meters and our water police has cut our revenue losses and enable us to hold users of our water services accountable. In light of the gap between the county's requirements and actual supply, we have worked closely with the national government to conclude the Northern Collector Tunnel 1, which we expect to deliver 140 million liters per day once complete. Members, I think you know the challenge of water in Nairobi. I think I have explained it many times. Nairobi County only had four sources of water when we got into office since 1904. Recently, actually last Saturday, I went to Kikuyu Springs. Kikuyu Springs was the first source of water, produces 6,000 cubic meters, built in 1904, between 1904 to 1910. The second one was built in 1928 in a place called Ruiru, in Ruiru The third one, I don't know why we're uploading, I'm sure there's no member from Ruiru. The third one, honorable members, was built in Sasumwa, in uh, Nyandarwa County. Sasumwa Dam gives us 60 million liters of water every day. And the final one, between 1994 to 1997, is in Dakaine Dam, that gives us 84% of our water. If you add up all of those four, ladies and gentlemen, and the people of Nairobi, we only receive 525.6 million liters of water a day. The demand of water is 870 million liters. It shows you there is a gap. There was a stall project called the Northern Collector One that had been stalled for a long time. Members, I am proud to announce to you that I knocked all the doors. I have followed up with the national government, with the president, with Earth Water Works, with our donors. We have been able to pay all the way lifts. Just two weeks ago, the MD of Athi Water asked us to help get permission from Kenha to do an open cut, which they got, so that the water can come from Northern Collector 1 and Karimenu, and, uh, Karimenu, yes, and Karimenu, 25 million liters per day from Karimenu, and 140 million liters a day from Northern Collector 1. The valves have come. In the next few weeks, we're going to have an additional 140 million liters of water coming into our pipes for the people of Nairobi. I did not stop there. When you see me traveling, it is not to play golf, because I don't play golf. When you see me traveling, it is to find for you and for the people of Nairobi. We have been able to secure $100 million from the government of South Korea to help us develop Northern Collector 2, which will give us, and Maragua 4, which will give us 220 million liters of water additional. Currently, currently, uh, our Nairobi Water and Storage Company, through our Department of Water, led by CEC Ibrahim, are working with the National Treasury to conclude the funding uh, documents for the development of Northern Collector 2 and Maragua 4, meaning that in the next three years, it is going to be possible for us to completely forget the issues of lack of water. But beyond that, we must think of the next million liters of water coming to Nairobi. The reason why the problem we are in is because the last source was developed thinking about the population of the year 2002 of 2 million Nairobians. Today we are 5 million and counting. So allow us to also think into the future as we prepare for the, the city of the future. We will soon ease the water rationing schedule. Those who receive it twice a week will get it more times a week. Those who receive four times a week should be able to get it every day of the week. But with the requisite pressure, because pressure is what is required for us to also even be able to use technology like SCADA to monitor where there are leakages, deliberate or not deliberate. Members, we have been working with the national government on the water police. There are many parts of our city where unscrupulous traders have breached our water pipelines to produce water and to sell water to different people, either through Bowser's or directly piping.
I remember stopping on Airport North Road. That must have been Kimondo's uh, ward. What looked like a kiosk selling normal sweets and uh, confectionery and groceries. There's a lady who had actually put 16 pumps. Underground, she had diverted water from our major pipeline. And those 16 pumps were supplying water to flats and apartments. And she was also supplying electricity. This lady, by her own, is Nairobi Water and Kenya Power. In one. We have seen what such interruptions cause. Members, again, when you see Engineer Muguna, Arnold, Oscar Omoke, or Ibrahim, coming to your ward to deal with the legal connections. Kindly give them space to do their work. Today, the people of Langata, for the first time, are receiving water, maybe not to the requisite pressure because we are moving there, but for the first time in decades, because we had to concretize part of the pipeline going there. But we didn't do it without humanity. We also made sure that the people in the informal settlements of Kibra can also get water to different points. And I'm sure Moshimiwa Jera, Moshimiwa Lawi, Moshimiwa Masitsa, you can attest to it. And of course, Mama Network, you can attest to that is what is happening today in Kibra. Even if we want to help our young people with car washes, we can do it in a proper way. Members, if you ever have any need to assist our young people kindly, let's channel it properly. I think you saw the incident that happened in Umoja too. And you saw me swing into action to make sure that we balance the needs of employment of our young people, but things to be done in an orderly way. I am sure I can have a commitment in ensuring that that is done. Let me also add that the city's Siwa network, which, are, which was developed to serve a population of only 2 million people, was last substantially upgraded in 1987. That system is being overhauled. It will be overhauled. We have secured financing of up to 20 billion shillings from the Africa Development Bank and the French Development Agency to upgrade this. This will be applied through Athi Water Works and Nairobi uh, Water Sewerage and Com uh, Nairobi Water and Sewerage Company. Ladies and gentlemen, much of Nairobi's housing does not dignify our people. Our families deserve to live in, fami in houses with separate rooms for their children and with private bathrooms for their parents. There is no dignity, members, when we have millions of Nairobians who live in a house where the only thing separating you and your children is a bedsheet. There is no dignity. Honorable members, especially of the male gender, the men, there is no dignity when your wife has to go and line up early in the morning to a communal bathroom to shower where the other men and women standing outside. That is the life of many of the people of Nairobi. The housing agenda for the county of Nairobi must go on. And it is going to go on. Our urban renewal and affordable housing plan will make it possible for us to begin building these dignified homes that our people deserve. Members, we intend to do the work we're doing. You know we've awarded six estates. We also intend to partner with the national government because they have a fund with money. The place that this fund needs to be applied the most is Nairobi. There is no part of this country with more informal settlements than Nairobi. Earlier this year, I said that long-term residents, those who stayed in Jericho, those who stayed in Bahati, those who stayed in Woodley, those who stayed in these old houses that belong to us as a county, will be able to convert their past rent payments into payment for their new homes. Each and every resident who lives in our houses, where a card has been passed from a father to a nephew to a daughter to a son, they will get to own those houses and they will pay for service charge. Those houses, what they paid from the 60s, what they paid from the 50s, is enough mortgage for them to own those houses. And I will give you an example. I met recently with the people of Woodley here. 42 houses honorable speaker, are going to give us 1,975 apartments. Will it not be greedy and unappreciative 
for the county again to demand those 42 people to start paying as if they have come today. Don't they deserve those houses? I will bring that to the assembly because you have to pass it. But let us think of these people. But ladies and gentlemen, every cloud has a silver lining. Through your speaker, the Right Honorable Ken Okeongonde, who has a very colorful past in the entertainment sector as I did. Together with your leadership, the leaders of majority, minority, and the whips, I am committed, and please take me seriously, read my lips. I am committed to ensuring that each and every one of you in this assembly, as well as in the executive, get to own a house in the city of Nairobi. You first start from Jerusalem going outwards. I, when a chaplain, I hope I am saying it correctly. All of you will own keys. Because as we seek to give dignity to our people, we must first start by giving dignity to their leaders. We must give dignity to our workers, to our staff who have been here for decades. And when they retire, have nothing to show of their hard and sweat. So that one we shall do. Mr. Speaker, I know the rules don't allow us to, to mix languages, but allow me in hyphen, Kilamdu Apate Keja, Nairobi. Mr. Speaker, I know that many of you have been involved in consultations around the various development projects and redevelopment projects, whether in Woodley, in Jericho 1 and 2, in Bahati, in Ziwani, in Maringo, in Karubangi North, or elsewhere. Thank you for your patience. This process was undertaken very carefully and meticulously. We worked with the PPP Secretariat in the national government. We worked with the housing committees to make sure that what we give the people of Nairobi is quality. Not a house where you open the door and the window opens, but a proper unit where you can be proud to call your home. Additionally, the World Bank, through the State Department of Housing and Urban Development, has helped us with financing two major projects of improvement in our informal settlements. The procurement for the first round done by the, by the Nairobi County Government, a sum of 557 million shillings, has closed last month. We've identified sites in Embakasi, in Kayole, Soweto, Moshimiwa, Magoba. You know, you call me every day about it. It is coming. Mujiwa Uruma, Moshimiwa Fiu, always on my phone. It is coming. Kambi Moto in Uruma is also coming and many other parts of the city. Kahawa Soweto, Moshimiwa, where is the, the Moshimiwa? Yes, my brother Uticas. It is coming, if you say so. It is also coming. We are taking over this work. We are hitting the ground, and work will begin. Please, members, let us dignify those who are now enduring difficult conditions in these informal settlements. I don't believe there's something called slum upgrading. We must do what we call slum eradication. There is no first class slum or second class slum. A slum is a slum. Let us move to slum eradication and give people a place of dignity, which even helps their self-esteem. You cannot walk out of that place, dodge sewer, and come into the CBD and walk with your head up high. Let us give our people a semblance of dignity. In every part of, thank you, oh, I even forgot this water. Thank you. In every part of the county, we have listened to you carefully. We have taken your concerns on board. We will continue to do so as we hasten construction and redevelop redevelopment so that eventually every family in Nairobi has a home that dignifies them. When it comes to housing, we are keeping our promises. And I want to tell you members, and I told you leadership is partnership. Whatever we do today, Jomo Kenyatta said that our fathers might have been heroes of the past. It is our duty today to be architects of the future. Everything we do must have successive continuity. There is no project of Mayor Aladwa, who is here in the gallery. There is no project of Mayor Majiwa, who is here in the assembly. There is no project of Governor Ivan Skidero in Nairobi County. There's no project of Governor Sonko, and there's no project of Governor Sakaja. 
every work we do is for the people of Nairobi. MCAs, as you develop your words, don't think of a project in terms of your predecessor. If it had stalled, complete it. It is for the future. It is for other generations to come. Leadership is partnership. Secondly, we have issued more than 3,000 title deeds and leases to Nairobians, long unjustly deprived of the property. We have issued title deeds to our schools and other public facilities that have been left insecure in their property. And we will continue to do so. We've had cases of land grabbing of public facilities. We shall not accept it anymore in the county of Nairobi. I'm very happy. Some of the projects we've broken ground on were from lands that were previously grabbed. Moshimua Samora will tell you of Clay City, the Maji Mazuri market that is coming on 5.4 acres of land was built on a piece of land where somebody was trying to sell it to the county just a year ago. That is our land. We shall build that market. Moshimua Martin will tell you the market we broke ground on 244 million shillings in Mutuini is built on land that had been previously grabbed. We said this land belongs to the people of Nairobi. Construction is on. Is it ongoing? Wonderful. And many other parcels, including city market right here in the CBD, which we have secured, we have fenced, we are going to build on it. We have given titles, Babadoko Primary, Bahati Primary, Fort Hall Primary, Garden Estate Primary, High Ridge Primary, Kabete Primary, Kawa West Primary School, Kabiru Primary, uh, Clarence, you, you know they have a title. Kileleshwa Day Nursery School, Kileleshwa Primary, Kiregu Primary, Lavington Primary, Kasarani Primary, Makongeni Primary Leader of Majority, Mariakani School, Madare 4A Primary, I think that must be Atito, you have the title. Madare Primary as well, Bagafi Primary, Mu Avenue Primary, Mukuru Kayaba Primary, Muranga Road Primary, Mudaika Day Primary, Ngei Primary, Nembu Primary, Park Road Primary, Race Coast Primary, Riverbank, Rudimitu, Shauri Moyo, St. Anne's, St. Bridget, Starey Day Nursery, Waidaka Technical, Zawadi Primary, St uh, Nixon, where we're building our kitchen, and Visa Oshol Primary, that is, that the attempts to take away from us. We are going to secure our land. Anything that you find when you get into leadership is not a gift given to you by your ancestors, but a gift you're holding in trust for your descendants, for those who are coming after us. We have also mapped out public assets and exercise that continues to go on so that Nairobians can rest certain that the public land which their schools, markets, and hospitals are built upon are not seized for private use. These efforts, ladies and gentlemen, have brought us a 16% rise in rates revenue. They have secured the property rights of Nairobi and they have made it possible to give land back to those who have been denied a piece of their own, whether individually or communally. In the coming few days, and I don't want to preempt it, members, I will give you a report of just exactly what we have been able to secure that was either going, gone, or being planned for in the county of Nairobi. Let me speak about our work to equalize opportunity in the county of Nairobi. When the people of Nairobi gave me the honor of leading this county, they asked for equity. They spoke clearly. They said the days when opportunity was a favor and not a right, the days when it was distributed by corruption, chronism, and quiet nods were over. We have lived up to that standard. This financial year, we are distributing and we have distributed bursaries and scholarships worth 857 million, 800,000 to 124,100 to 124,100 young men and women in Nairobi. That is right, 857 million. Ladies and gentlemen, let me give you an illustration. From 2013, where there was a county government, to 2017, what well, was the next county government, followed by many things, many iterations of our government, including NMS, including speakers, and I thank them, all those who've held forth. For 10 years, Nairobi County spent 3 billion in total on bursaries. 3 billion. In the last 19 months, we have spent 1.88 billion in bursaries. In less than two years, 
we have allocated quite a significant amount. We have steadily raised our allocation to the ward bursary funds. We started at 4.5 million per ward in 2022. We are now up to 7 million shillings per ward. For the first time, again, since God built Kenya, in the history of our great county and country, bursaries are available every school term. 2.5 million, first term. 2.5 million, second term. 2 million, third term, times 85 wards of Nairobi. That means that most students and pupils will have a clear opportunity to make the most out of their talents. In equalizing opportunities, we have begun to break the cycle of corruption, impunity, poverty, and division. For many and many of us, we can only be where we are because of education. We want academic excellence for our children, but we also want physical excellence for them. We want them to learn the virtues that team sports fosters, courage, teamwork, and a love for excellence. And sports also keeps them out of trouble. But let me tell you, members, you will never have cohesion if you don't have equality of opportunities. You must equalize opportunities. That a child born in Madare, a child born in Mukuru, must know that they have the same chance at life as a child born in Karen, as a child born in Lovington. That they know that they have the same shot at life. The prerogative for that equality of opportunity rests in this house. We must equalize the outcomes of these children. And the greatest equalizer is education. So we shall increase support towards our children in education. Members, as you speak about sports, I want to thank you for participating and supporting. We launched the inaugural Sakaja Super Cup in 2023. We featured 374 teams. 340 teams right from the wards and 34 female teams from the constituencies. It was very successful. We put on a street soccer tournament last year and we continue to support various infrastructure across the county. So our primary means of that support really is on building sporting facilities and infrastructure. I'm very happy that we concluded the construction of and launched Dandora Stadium, which we're going to bring a proposal to rename as the Mugabe Were Stadium. And that is in honor of a gallant Kenyan who from the time he was out of the country to coming to the council personally made sure we've secured that land in Dandora put resources on the land in Dandora, and finally we have a stadium. We also must acknowledge the former governor of Nairobi, Governor Mike Mbuvi Sonko, because despite many odds, he really was passionate about that stadium. As we always say, it is not how you start, it's how you finish. You must acknowledge Governor Sakaja Arthur Johnson for concluding, <laughs> for concluding that stadium which we shall use in memory of the gallant warriors. We recently concluded and opened Uhuru Sports Complex in Karibangi South, Honorable Mbatia. Thank you. And in commissioning Uhuru Sports Complex in uh, Uhuru, we acknowledge number one, Honorable Norman Nyaga of Kamkunji. Honorable Simon Bugwa of Kamkunji, because that time it was in Kamkunji. They helped us secure it. We also acknowledged Honorable Yusuf, who played his role at a point. We acknowledged former councillors, Honorable Bombatia, the former governor. Because if it was not for all of those, and that's why I tell you leadership is not an event, it's a process, it's successive. Leadership is partnership. Today, I'm already seeing a lot of revenue coming in from those two stadia. Members, Mwiki Sports Complex is at 95%. Is on the book, go around. Thank you. Is that true or false? True. Thank you. Of course, you can't say anything, else, but thank you for accepting. Mwiki Sports Complex. We had some delays in Joka Denge City Stadium in Makongeni. The contractors are on site. They are back working with speed and alacrity. The same is the story of Woodley Stadium in uh, Kibra constituency. The contractors on site, the works are underway. I would really want us to also find a good name 
for the Woodley Stadium, that we can also name it. Instead of the Mzungu's name of Woodley, you can find a good name for that uh, stadium, just as we are renaming City Stadium to Joe Kadenge Stadium. Joe Kadenge was a gallant footballer. He was a hero of our times. He played for the team which I have been patron, AFC Leopards, Ingwe. So in as much as that is Gormaya's home ground, please allow the name of Joe Kadenge to go up, as has been passed by this county assembly. We intend to move to the next ground of stadium grounds. Pandapieri in Gidurai. Gidurai were the winners of the Super Cup last year. Mukuru grounds in Embakasi South, who are the runners-up. Where is Honorable Mudoni? I cannot... There she is. Thank you so much. Mukuru Kwanjenga. Kwa Ruben. Kwa Ruben, yes. Kiumbuini grounds in Kangemi, Honorable Malaya. Durarua grounds in Dagureti South. Uh, is that Njogu or is it uh, Kiogora? One of the two. Umeme grounds in Ziwani, where is Mashimi Mrefu, where we have Kothbiro. From 1979, we have religiously played Kothbiro in those grounds. And the nature of that ground is that that tournament cannot be moved to any other part of the city. Hamza grounds in Makadara need to be looked at. Calvary in Embakasi Central. Majimbo grounds in Makongeni. Kahawa West in Roisambu, amongst others. Members, we intend to restore and manage Camp Toyoyo in Makadara, which has fallen into great disrepair, disrepair in recent years. The land belongs to the county. The work was done by the CDF. The maintenance will revert to the county government. We shall allocate a budget to put the turf back, and I'm sure Chairman will help us do that, and the leader of majority. I think all of you who have come from that part of the city know the significance of Camp Toyoyo. And of course, I must congratulate and remember Honorable Bena, who was our speaker here, for the work he did as an MP of the area. Let me also mention, members, I am close to finishing, both the Nairobi Festival and the Battle of the Choirs, whose recent second edition was so memorable. As it supports this and other cultural events, teach our children and young people virtues that will stand them in good stead for citizenship and service to their communities. We believe that the creative economy has a huge potential of being a lucrative economic frontier for our youth. Nairobi is a hotbed of talent. You only need to take a stroll in the CBD on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon to see scores of young people taking photos and shooting videos since I lifted the ban a year or so ago. We will soon acquire, it's also in the high seas, our first mobile recording studio for our musicians and choirs. This mobile recording studio on a 40-foot container will move constituency to constituency, ward to ward, so that our musicians, our young people, our choirs can be able to record their art. We have also made proposals that will be coming to you to have 17 recording studios in each and every constituency for our budding musicians to access, either in our social halls or in our sub-county administrative offices. Mr. Speaker, when Nairobians gave us the honor of leading this county, many asked for better facilities for our hustling traders. Indeed, some of you have been talking to me about this matter since I was your senator. The need for proper and accessible business operation, operating premises is real. Nairobi is full of energetic people who want to work and improve their lives. Again, we also need to decongest the central business district, so distributing markets outside is essential. These are very important catchment area for our traders. And that is why we're building these markets outside the CBD and on important routes so that we can make the most of these opportunities. A few weeks ago, as I mentioned just now, I broke ground for Mutini Market, which is going to cost us $244 million. It will be done. That's only one representative market of those that we're building in the next few months and years. We promise to deliver markets to the people of Nairobi. We will deliver. We are building Juju Market in uh, Mihango. Current Market already procurement process is about to be concluded. Moshimiwa uh, Anthony. Kahawa West, Moshimiwa Dr. Clement, you know where we are with that. Hospital Hill, Madari, we're building the Raila Odinga market, what was a toy, toy market. We're building the Riruta market. We're building Jiru, Gumba in Madari, and Karubangi North markets. Uhuru market as well, in, uh, along Jogorod. Construction of four is ongoing and beginning this financial year. Uh, Mutuni has started 
The next three should include Karen, uh, Juju, and the uh, Uhuru market. And the rest, just after June, when we get into July, we shall continue. I'm very grateful that the national government has offered to pick up 10 of our markets. And so Maji Mazuri is on course. A rural market, a rather, rather Ruai market is also on course, and many others. But just as we were decentralizing markets from the CBD, we are also moving public services out and bringing them to your neighborhoods. Look, we can all remember how stressful it was to get basic public services. I know we've all been there, going from one office to another office in the CBD, wondering where help would come. There are few things more annoying than not getting the services your taxes are paid for. It had to end. Following extensive public participation, my administration has identified six proposed boroughs in the county of Nairobi to which we intend to devolve our services. Nairobi North, Nairobi East, Nairobi South, Nairobi West, Nairobi Central, and Nairobi South East. We have commenced the construction of Southern and Northern Borough offices in Kibra constituency and in Kasarani. Um, uh, respectively. We have identified sites for the construction of the other four, which will commence in subsequent financial years. Allow me to thank you for participating in the public participation processes and also our members of National Assembly, because they also had a session and they came and gave their ideas. There were historical issues. The Dagoretis, for instance, did not want to be separated. You know, There were issues with Kibra and Nangata. There were issues of Kasarani and Roisambu and Bakasi South and Bakasi East and Makadara. All of those have been taken into consideration and the report should be with the county assembly. In the sub-counties, we are working to complete the stalled offices for Westlands, Kasarani and Makadara sub-counties. We have also embarked on the phased improvement of ward offices to bring services closer to our people. Having improved the conditions under which our staff work, it is essential to help them to serve you better. We cannot expect our staff to give dignity to our people when they are working in undignified working environments. And that is why the first improvements done within the CBD, within City Hall, were at City Hall Annex. From 1983, when City Hall Annex was constructed, there had never been any improvement. I invite you to visit it. And if you have not been there in a while, you might get lost. City Hall Annex today stands as a state-of-the-art um, representation of who Nairobi is. Every Nairobian who needs a service now has to get it promptly and fairly. I have asked each and every sector, and I know they are working on the standard operating procedures and service level agreements of how long it must take to respond to a citizen of Nairobi. We do not need the situation where you must know somebody to push your file or to actually get you responded to. Many of you have endured the frustration of delay and denial of service. These innovations and use of technology are designed quite directly to end those frustrations. What is our vision? Our people without a vision will perish. We must always remember what we are trying to achieve. When you wake up every day, when you leave your families, when you leave your homes, what are we working towards? A few days ago, I was asked about my early memories of Nairobi. We grew up in a city that was orderly. We grew up in a city where there was community because neighbors knew and cared for each other. We grew up in a city which public services worked. The quality of municipal governance made our family life possible, and we were grateful. Nairobians want a city of order, dignity, of hope, and of opportunity. A city where everybody knows and obeys the rules, where no one is subjected to indignity and humiliation. A city of hope, and of opportunity for all. That is the county I desire. And I know that is the county that you want and that the people of Nairobi desire. As leaders, we are responsible for achieving it. Tom Joseph Mboya said, there are no supermen who are going to come. It is upon us to change our county. I ask you once again, members, to rededicate yourselves to making Nairobi that green city under the sun. We expect that this plan will guide our city's journey as we look towards the future into all sorts of exciting ways that yet keep faith with the vision that we have, the vision 
that we share, that will expand infrastructure and service networks within the city. Members, and especially the Committee on Planning, as you consider Mwishumio Palapala, new development guidelines and land use plans for the city that are before this assembly. We brought this before the assembly. Members, you must appreciate the global urbanization trends. We have had a lot of commentary out there about statements that we have made and that we stand by of where the city is going. By the year 2050, which is less than 28 years from now, Nairobi will have at least 10.5 million inhabitants. The SDGs recognize that 65% of the world's population is going to be in urban centers. To avoid urban sprawl, which you have seen in many parts of the world, and its negative concomitant effects, we must rethink and redesign many of our neighborhoods. Our city is 696 square kilometers. It will not expand. We must use the available technology of building to ensure sustainable housing, even as we raise height restrictions in different parts of the city. The city will not expand. We shall not have urban sprawl. Densification is the way to go. We can only go up. However, members, the process of reviewing of these plans, which brings together our urban planners, our resident associations, other professionals must take these facts into consideration. The provision of water and sanitation remains a key consideration. I am grateful to our development partners who have actually committed billions of shillings to expand our sewer networks, to expand our water networks, and to expand that necessary infrastructure. Let no one imagine that we will just issue a blank check for uncontrolled development before the infrastructure that is required to go hand in hand with it. But we must start socializing ourselves that the 1976 urban master plan of a city of a million people cannot hold in 2024 for a city that is looking to the future. We must ensure there is provision of green spaces in every building plan considered, and I am sure that that will be incorporated in the guidelines before you. Strict adherence to development control guidelines, plot ratios, ground clearance, as well as provisions of social amenities in healthcare, in education, in recreation, and in mobility. Traffic assessments must be done. I am grateful to the government of the United States of America who have committed to us $60 million, which currently translates to around 8 billion shillings through the Millennium Challenge Corporation to finance our land use and mobility planning as well as our infrastructural development, including part of the buses for the BRT, in a threshold program that will cover the next few months. Additionally, that will lead to what we call a compact program, which goes above the tune of $700 million. I will be joining His Excellency the President in a state visit to the United States of America on invitation of the government of the United States to make sure that you, the leaders of Nairobi, who represent the people of Nairobi, are able to follow this development that's coming to our city and that the people of Nairobi are able to benefit from it. As leaders of this county, because we had the new plan, the new plan provided a framework for detailed planning of the city. After the new plan, there were supposed to be local area plans for each and every area. During the time of the NMS, they advertised for different plans. I remember Airport North, Woodley. It never happened. And we said instead of piecemeal plans, this MCC support of $60 million can help enable us, on the foundation of new plan, to actually do the Nairobi urban master plan moving forward. As leaders of this county, we need not just look at the day-to-day -day running of the city or the quarterly plans, but also Nairobi of the future. Just as those who made the last master plan of the city in the 70s, they had a vision for the city decades hence. We too now must plan today for the Nairobi our grandchildren will inherit. The future will not plan itself. It is for you to plan and to look at it. And that is why this year, 
we are going to consult widely. We are soon gazetting the Nairobi Vision 2050 Task Force that will create a comprehensive new development plan for a city building on the steps and the foundations I have mentioned. I ask you members to be part of that process. We'll have our resident associations part of that process. We'll have our engineers, our architects. We'll have urban economists. We'll have all the sectors, our traders, our market people, public transport operators, the Matatu people. All of them will come and participate in this year-long process of Nairobi Vision 2050. When President Mwai Kibaki spoke about 2030 in the year 2002, people thought it was a long way ahead. It was 28 or so years ahead of that time. The year 2050 is about the same period of time from now. We must start now. And thereafter, every decade plan, every CIDP, every annual plan, every flagship project shall build into that city, that global hub that God has blessed us with, with a gift of location, that from Nairobi you can be in New York in 13 hours, that from Nairobi you can be in Dubai in 5 hours, you can be in Amsterdam in 8 hours, you can be in London in 8 hours. In fact, it's always strange, you can go to New York in 13, but you come back in 11. And I thought it's because it is, uh, it is downhill. But there's a good explanation because of the rotation of the earth. Somebody said the pilot just steps on the clutch and they go down from New York to Nairobi. But you cannot have a situation where you're here in eight, the center of the world and get stuck in traffic for four hours. We must take advantage of a global capital, the only one in the world, where you can be sitting, looking at animals in their natural, unspoilt, untouched habitat. And in the background is a scallion of a capital city. It's only in Nairobi. We can only take advantage of that if we plan the future. So members, I ask you to support Nairobi 2050. So at this great historic city of great consequence, many of you may not know the building you're in was once the tallest building in East Africa from 1935 because of the clock tower. But Nairobi then also got the first Commonwealth Charter in the world given by the, Prince of Gloucester, the, the, the Duke of Gloucester. We have such a rich heritage that Africans then were not allowed in this building. And only those who could be allowed to come in at the then gallery or those who owned land. Our fathers were heroes of the past. You are the architects of the future. Members, I ask you to give me your support. For if we work together, then this city, in the words in Jeremiah 33.9, will be the city that brings God renown, joy, praise and honor before all nations on earth that will hear of all the good things the Lord has done for it. And they will be awed by its prosperity and peace. To our Muslim brothers and sisters, during this last special 10 days of Lailatul Qadr, I ask you to pray for Nairobi and to pray for Kenya. For God's peace, protection, and prosperity. Saul Makbul, and I wish you a happy Eid al-Fitr. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, Ladies and Gentlemen, the people of Nairobi, God bless you all. God bless Nairobi. God bless Kenya. Lazima Iwak. Thank you. Honorable Speaker, pass on to Section 32J of the County Governments Act. I hereby submit to the County Assembly the annual report on the implementation status of county policies and plans, as well as the address that I have given for subsequent debate by the House. Asante sana. Thank you, Your Excellency, the Governor. Indeed, Governor, you have set the standard. And uh, for those who are eyeing the seat, maybe in 2027, we'll have to really try and adjust uh, to fit. Honorable members, our standing order 
number 274 provides, and I quote, whenever the governor delivers an address, a member